What? I'm I'm getting ready for the uh, the graduation. What What do you mean? I'm not doing the graduation anymore. What happened? They found somebody somebody else. But I know I know I got all ready and everything. Look, I, how often do I get to wear this? Like I never get to wear this thing. This was like one of my this was my opportunity. This is my opportunity to get to wear this. Look, I have the whole, uh, what is this, a hood or whatever. It's all, it's all fancy and everything. Look at it. Look how nice it is. I don't get to wear it. So what do they want me to do? Chapel. They want me to do a chapel? For who? Middle school and high school? Both of them. Do they even know who I am? Yeah, sure, I could just put it in the, the title, right? I could just put who what I do. But do you think they care? I don't know. What do you mean? I can just delete all of this out. They're not going to hear any of this. I'll just delete this. Sure, I promise you, I'm, I'm not going to forget. I'm going to delete it. I know how to edit. What's wrong with you? Well, I'll just start right here. Yeah, I'm going to edit all this other stuff out. They won't ever see this. Now, don't, don't, don't worry about it. Nah, 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 it won't be a problem. Well, hello, Eastern Mennonite School. My name is Glenn Guyton, and I'm the Executive Director of Mennonite Church USA. And it is so great to be with you here today, uh, virtually. I wish I could be there with you in person, but of course, we have this little thing going on right now called uh, the coronavirus. But hey, I'm thankful uh, that you have allowed me to be here today with you. Wherever you're watching, however you're tuning in, I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but you are watching this uh, somewhere. And uh, I hope you like the little greenery. You like that, the little greenery. I want to give you a, a touch, of, touch of nature as we uh, go through this. Some of you may be uh, stuck indoors. Some of you may be out and about. I don't know what you're doing, uh, but I figured I'd add a little bit of greenery here to our presentation today. Well, again, I'm uh, Glenn Guyton, Executive Director of Mennonite Church USA, and I'm so thankful uh, for, to be here with you. Uh, I want to say something. A hundred years ago, uh, a generation was born called the greatest generation. Some of you may have heard that term, the greatest generation, but it is a group of individuals in our society. Uh, they were born in the early 1900s up until about 1920, so like 100 years ago, right? They were called the greatest generation by one of our reporters because of everything that they had to endure. They had to go through a lot. They went through the Great Depression. Uh, they also went through a couple of world wars, depending on when they were born. So they were tough, right? They were the tough generation because they overcame so much adversity and they became what one reporter called is the greatest generation to have ever lived in the past 100 or so years. But you know, now that I look at everything that's going on, all that you are going through in this generation, I bet you're going to be the next greatest generation. I bet you're going to have stories to tell your children, your grandchildren, as you come through everything that's going on right now. You, you know, we have this global pandemic going on. Uh, some of you, seniors class of 2020, I'm so sorry. Some of you are missing uh, a lot of the ceremonies and things that, you know, you would typically have, the parties and the fellowship. And I'm so sorry that you're going through this. Uh, middle schoolers, some of you all are going through a lot. You can't go out and play and do all the wonderful things uh, that you would normally do. But you're going to be a part of a great generation because I know that you will be resilient and the things and the lessons that you learn now will benefit you later in life. Now, you are an interesting generation. You have to deal with TikTok and you have to deal with the coronavirus. I don't know what which is worse, TikTok 
or the coronavirus. For you, it's probably em embarrassing when people like me, people my age and your parents get on the videos and, and start doing all those things. I don't even know what they do. I don't even have TikTok. But it's a lot to deal with. But you, the next great generation, you will be able to sort it all out. I don't even know what TikTok does. I don't know what it is. I don't know why you want a TikTok. The only thing I know about TikTok is I see people uh, DJing and, and stuff like that in their kitchen and, and, and just doing a whole bunch of weird stuff. So that on top of Corona and uh, you're concerned about the environment, it is a lot. So what do you do? What do you do, great generation? That's what I'm, I'm going to call you. You're my great generation. Well, I want you to think about this scripture from the book uh, uh, of Psalms. Psalms 89 verses 15 through 17. And it says, happy are those who hear the joyful call to worship, for they will walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice all day long in your wonderful reputation. They exalt in your righteousness. You are their glorious strength. It pleases you to make us strong. I want you to remember that scripture. And that's the scripture, you know, from, from David. David sang many songs and David uh, was someone chosen by God that went through a lot of stuff. David went through a lot of stuff and some of it was not his fault. Some of it was his fault. David made some bad decisions. David did some stupid things. But David always turned to God. And this scripture just talks about the resilience of the people of God and the people that have faith and put trust in God. You all, oh, I forgot. I'm not doing this this uh, graduation. Let me, let me take this off. It's too much, right? It's too much to be doing a chapel. Let me get a little bit more comfortable uh, as I shared with you today. All right, that's, that's better. I feel much better now. But back to David. David endured a lot. He suffered a lot, but he always understood who God was and that God will see him through. And I want you to remember that uh, no matter what it seems like is going on, uh, no matter how bleak things seem, you know, if you're dealing with uh, murder hornets, right? That's the big new thing, murder hornets. I don't even know what they are, but know that God is in control and that we will get through this together as a community of faith and together because of our faith. So I just want to share just a couple of things with you as we go through this chapel. Things I want you to remember as you continue on your journey to be the next great generation. First of all, peace of mind. You can do this. You got this. I believe in, in you. Peace is a state of mind. I want you to have peace of mind. Take time to relax and reflect on uh, your faith in God. Reflect on the strength of your family. Reflect on the strength of your community. Because we're going to all get through this together. So I know you can do it. There was another generation a hundred years ago that had to endure hardship and, and, and trouble and uncertainty. And you are the next generation that will get through this with flying colors. The next thing I want to say is be creative. There is opportunity out there if you are creative, if you look for uh, the new things that can occur. Always in a time of destruction, if a forest burns down, there's opportunity for new growth. If a house burns down, there's an opportunity for you to rebuild. So we have to think about what are the opportunities as we move forward. So out of all of the confusion, out of all of the pain, there will be opportunities that only your generation can take advantage of. So be creative. Think of new things. I got a picture of this guy on the guitar here. Why? Because... I'm, I'm learning to practice, play the guitar. I have a couple of guitars that I'm, I'm uh, working on right now because I want to take this opportunity to be creative and do something new for me. What can you do for yourself? The next thing is ignore old people sometimes. Don't ignore me right now because I'm, I'm, sharing some, I'm dropping some knowledge. I'm sharing wisdom with you. But sometimes ignore old people, right? Because we have stories. We've been through some things and we were comfortable. We were used to some things and our world has been shaken up a little bit. And sometimes we have anxiety. Your mom, your dad, they may have anxiety because they don't know what's going on. But don't let that get you anxious. You know the old stories that, that old people tell? I had to walk a hundred miles 
uphill both ways to go to school. That's not true. They didn't. They probably rode the bus. They probably walked a, a half a block. But sometimes us old people like to tell old stories. And I don't know about the stories your parents tell or the stories that your teachers tell, but my stories get better and better each time that I tell them. So sometimes you have to ignore us when we're being silly, but pay attention when we're sharing wisdom with you. And find your story. That's the most important thing. Find your story. A lot of people will try to tell you what to think, how to think, and when to think it. Even the news is confused. We don't know uh, who to believe. Do we believe CNN? Do we believe Fox News? What's fake news? What's true news? We don't know. There's confusion in and out of the White House. So you have to find your own story. Discover your truth. And one way that you can do that is through your faith and trusting in God. There are opportunities for you out there. Create your own story. What is the story for this new, this next great generation? You have one. Only you can write your story and only you can tell your story. And everyone's talking about, oh, are we going to ever get back to normal? What's normal? What's normal? Normal is whatever's next. Again, you can, you're writing your own story. The normal for Glenn, who was who graduated from high school probably in 1988, yes, so great, in 88. The normal for me is not the normal for you in 2020. It's different. So your normal is going to be different. I had, while you're listening to, to TikTok and all those things, I had a Walkman with tape, you know, cassette tape. That's what I had. That was the that was the new creative technology for my class. So whatever's next is going to be normal. So don't worry about some of the things that we've left behind. But class of 2020, move forward. Class of 2021, class of 2022, class of 2023. All of you all, walk into what's next. Write your own, own story and create your next normal. Well, hey, thank you so much uh, for your time. Thank you for allowing me to share a little bit with you. I'm sorry uh, that I'm not uh, able to be there uh, in person, but I'm here virtually. I hope you have enjoyed this. And hey, there are so many great things that 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 are going to happen. I know there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of things that people are afraid about, but you are the next great generation. And I'm looking forward to all the things that you are going to achieve, all the things that, you, that you're going to change for the better because of this opportunity. So thank you so much. Uh, and one thing that I will say that I hope becomes normal is not wearing pants. Let me just share with you a little bit. Can you see that? Let's see. Can you, can you see that? Oh, oh, shorts, right? That's the, that's the next normal is being able to work in shorts. And nobody will ever know. That's the greatest thing that 2020 has given us. Well, thank you, young people. I will just encourage you. Put your trust and your faith in God. Knowing that God is our strength and he's always faithful. Thank you. Thank you, Eastern Mennonite School. Thank you, class of 2020. God bless.